plenary speaker, um, Dr. Seiji Tsutsubi, if I say that correctly. Um, really shortly, um, Seiji graduated with a, with a PhD of engineering from the Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics um, at the University of Tokyo. Um, he develops JXA launch vehicles, so this should be a very interesting presentation. And the scope of his research has recently expanded to design, maintenance, and operation. Um, so changing shift a little bit in topics, but very exciting area. Welcome to stage. Yeah, thank you for your introduction. Uh, introduction. And uh, uh, so it's a great honor to, for me to present our activities uh, using new maker simulation in airspace development. So here is the agenda of today. So first I will uh, introduce uh, what JAXA is and also uh, uh, the center I belong to called the Jedi Center. And then I will talk about what have been done using high fidelity simulation and EHPC. And I will pick up some uh, examples uh, here, design of launch pad for Epsilon solid launcher. And then I will talk about development of massively parallel combustion safety program. And in the third part, I will talk about where to go in the next 10 years. And finally, I will summarize my talk. So let's go. So JAXA is an aerospace agency in Japan. So we, de we de developed and also uh, operate the H3 flagship launch vehicle, and also Epsilon solid launcher. And uh, we sent uh, two spacecraft to the asteroid uh, called Hayabusa and the Hayabusa 2, and they, uh, they uh, returned back to Earth with uh, sound of satellite. The landing place of the re-entry capsule was Australia. So thank you for your cooperation. And uh, we also developed uh, the uh, unmanned cargo transfer vehicle to International Space Station called HTB. And then uh, in JAXA, we also conduct aviation researches. So this is a, a study of uh, supersonic aircraft in uh, this internal testing picture. So here shows the animation of the H3 launch, launcher. All different go for launch. Main engine start. So this is a maiden flight on March 7th in this year. Ignition and lift off. So it's a very beautiful flight. But okay. maybe some of you knew, know that this flight was failed, actually, because the uh, second liquid rocket engine was not excited. So it is considered that some electric, something happens in electrical component. So we are still now investigating the cause of failure. So JAXA has several field centers around Japan and also in the world. Uh, Tsukuba Space Center uh, close to Tokyo. So this is the largest center in, Jap in JAXA. And also my office is in Sagamihara campus. It is also uh, close to downtown Tokyo. So total number of employees is 1,600 and 78 percentage of them are technical staff. So uh, I belong to uh, Research and Development Directorate, Unit 3. The former name of our center is JAXA's Engineering and Design Innovation Center. So in short, JEDI Center, we call it. So maybe you are very easy to remember the name of this, right? So that's why so we are still using this name uh, in the international conference. So the aim of our center is to contribute to space development using uh, information technology and simulation technology. So our center is divided into four teams. So one team uh, studying software engineering and the numerical simulation team and utilization of AI and multidisciplinary uh, design. So I belong to these two teams, numerical simulation team and also utilization of AI. So today, uh, I will talk about the activities mainly done in, in numerical simulation team. So the leader of our center is Dr. Shimizu, and currently we have 13 researchers, including postdoc. So uh, I will show you what have been done in our center using, uh, mainly uh, using CFD. 
So most of our team members uh, have been involved, in, involved in the development of uh, LE9 liquid rocket engine used in the H3 first stage. So we have conducted many simulations such as uh, pump, turbine, and this is a, a simulation for cavitating flow in the inducer. And this shows the mixer uh, to mix the hot hydrogen and cold hydrogen. And this simulation shows the uh, regenerative cooling channels. And also, only this simulation uses this finite element method to evaluate the residual life of combustion chamber. So we also conduct the study, uh, the simulation for uh, aerodynamics of launch vehicle to evaluate the aerodynamic force, aerodynamic heating, and transonic buffet, and also acoustic load during ascent. And we also conduct the simulations for uh, propellant management. Now, this is a result of the upper stage uh, launch vehicle. And also we conduct a uh, simulation for the entry of upper stage. So launch pad. So in, uh, to develop launch pad, we have also conducted many simulations. So in the left hand side, these figures show the uh, simulation for ignition over pressure. So ignition over pressure is a low frequency pressure pulse uh, ejected at the ignition of a solid rocket motor. So because, uh, so this is a low frequency phenomena. Sorry. Maybe slide has, does not move. I don't know why. Excuse me, slide has stopped. Oh, maybe, okay, that's okay. So, uh, so this uh, pressure pulse uh, appeared in, in the launch pad frame duct. So that's why a launch pad should be designed to endure uh, the, uh, the pressure uh, fluctuations. And in the left hand side, this shows the lift off acoustic simulation for Epsilon launcher. So later I will talk about the detail of this large AD simulation and how to design uh, this launch pad. So I hope uh, presentation will go next. But anyway, <laughs> so uh, in the next uh, slide, I will show I will show you the uh, uh, the study of uh, launch pad design using similar simulations uh, used in the Epsilon. And then I hope the slide will go next. So, uh, okay, so we also conducted uh, uh, simulations for uh, spacecraft uh, because a spacecraft, uh, okay, nice. So this is a simulation uh, for H3 launcher. So in this case, I, we calculated six engines at the same time, and then you can see the pro uh, propagation of uh, air acoustics from jet uh, exhaust jets, and then uh, propagate to the launch vehicle. So this is a simulation for spacecraft using direct simulation Monte Carlo. And this, uh, the left figure shows the result of, uh, the evaluate the interaction of thruster plume of cargo transfer vehicle with International Space Station. Also in the right hand side, this is a simulation for landing of spacecraft on celestial body. Okay, so all these simulations are done using our supercomputer uh, called JSS3. The main computing system shown here uh, is based on the Fujitsu FX1000 architecture. So this is the same architecture with Fugaku supercomputer in Japan, uh, which is the second largest supercomputer in the world currently. So our supercomputer has 19.4 petaflops at this moment, as shown here. And uh, next to this super com uh, eight, uh, main computing system, we have a conventional PC cluster based on the Intel architecture uh, having uh, 1.2 petaflops. The reason why this uh, uh, conventional 
uh, PC cluster is located is uh, actually for post-processing. Because the number of mesh size increases, the data increases also. So that's why so this computer uh, clusters share the disk space with the main computing system. So our disk space has currently 15 petabyte. And so we don't need to move the data uh, from this supercomputer and then we post directly post-process such data. So that's why this kind of uh, PC cluster is very uh, important and useful for us to analyze the data. So, okay, so I will uh, talk about the design launchpad for Epsilon launcher using CFD. So, uh, actually at the launch, so maybe you have ever seen the launch of some rockets. So you can hear the very nice sound. So that sound is ejected from the uh, exhaust jet. So, the, 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 so it is very interest, uh, exciting for the humans to listen to such noise, but the noise is very intense. So that's why uh, the launch vehicle and the satellite in it is, uh, is not good, are uh, exposed to large acoustic loads at liftoff. That's why uh, it is important to mitigate of acoustic loads uh, this is one of, one of the important design requirement of Launchpad. So these two pictures show the former solid launcher called M5. So uh, we put microphones at the top of launcher boom here, and the result is here. So this is one octave band spectrum, and I show uh, four flights. So the overall sound pressure level measured here is 158 decibels in overall sound pressure level. So this is very huge noise. So that's why in the development of Epsilon, we were required to decrease this noise by 11 decibels in overall sound pressure level. So that is a very big headache for us. So uh, at first, we start with, uh, start with uh, the, so, how, so at first we want to uh, know where the noise comes from. So we start with a simulation to clarify the generation mechanism of M5 solid launcher. So this is a, a result, and we found that the frame deflector here underneath the rocket engine, so this is a cause of the acoustics. So that's why based on the knowledge obtained in, in the M5 simulation, so we started the preliminary and detailed design of launch pad using CFD and a subsequent model test. So these are the result of trade-off study in prelim preliminary design phase. So we conducted many simulations, and then after that, we move on to the detailed design using large eddy simulation and subscale model test. So here shows uh, uh, the launch pad designed in, uh, based on the previous slide. Uh, this is a launch pad, and this launch pad is composed of uh, the frame duct on the ground, and also movable frame duct, uh, this, region, this part. And inside the frame duct, there is a deflector, so this was designed to decrease the noise. <laughs> This is a proper action of operation. So, uh, in this slide, I'll compare the uh, result of M5 and Epsilon. So, this left figure compares the octave band sound pressure level measured at, the, at this point in M5 and this point in Epsilon. So, comparing with uh, this red line shows the result of Epsilon, and compare with M5, uh, the Epsilon can, uh, could be uh, reduced the noise by 13 decibels in overall sound pressure level. 
So this remarkable reduction of acoustic level was achieved by using CFD in design. So next, I will talk about the development of massively parallel combustion CFD program. So combustion chamber is uh, one of the most difficult components in the development of liquid rocket engine. So here shows the schematic of liquid rocket, schematic of liquid rocket combustor. So when we use a liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen for the propellant, so we use a coaxial injector to mix these two propellant. And in the, first, uh, in the liquid rocket engine, the coaxial injectors are located at the inlet of the combustion chamber. So in full-scale rocket combustor, the number of coaxial injector is more than 500. And if hazardous phenomena, uh, main hazard is combustion instability actually. So this occurs, uh, so many uh, failures occur, uh, happened. So these P figures are the example of the uh, failure occurred in space shuttle main engine. So if combustion instability occurs, the hot frame oscillates inside the chamber. And then in some cases, the hot frame attached to the inner wall of the uh, chamber. And so that uh, induces the surface degradation and cracking. And also if the uh, frame attached to the, uh, the face plate of the injector, as you can see, erosion of injector occurs and then explosion occurs. So uh, currently the design of liquid rocket engine is mainly based on the experiment and the previous knowledge. So we want to change this situation. So, so uh, uh, the development of massively parallel safety program to simulate combustion instability in liquid rocket engine has been developed since 2012. So we aim to develop a program that can achieve good performance in, in HPCs that will appear in 10 years. So 2022 is, was our target at that moment. So we call this program as LS Flow HO. So in this program, we selected flux reconstruction scheme called, in short, FR scheme. So I will briefly talk about FR scheme so suppose this is a two-dimensional cell. So in FR scheme, uh, there is a so-called solution point. Uh, solution point are introduced in, in each cell. And uh, solution point correspond to this red point. So uh, in, in this case, uh, uh, the uh, flux, a numerical flux is evaluated at each solution point and then reconstruct, reconstruct by using the polynomial having a third order in, in, in this one dimension. So in this case, uh, this is a two dimensional case. So we have four by four, 16 uh, solution point. So here shows the conventional finite element method. So comparing with the FDM finite difference method having the same number of cells. So we expect that same accuracy can be obtained in flux reconstruction scheme. So the reason why we choose this is uh, listed here. So mainly we have three reasons. So first, uh, the FR scheme is higher order method using unstructured mesh. So this is a very attractive feature. And the second is this can be achieved high scalability in massively parallel supercomputer. So because uh, when you uh, conduct a parallel computations, you decompose the computation domain, right? And then distribute such decomposed domains to each CPUs. So in that case, you need a communication between decomposed domains. So in FR scheme, uh, the, com uh, the data should be transferred between domains. It's only the boundary surface, boundary of the domains. So uh, flux point. So the number of the uh, data transfer uh, is very, min uh, very small in FR scheme. That's why uh, this scheme has a high scalability. And finally, uh, FR scheme is suitable for many core CPUs and GPUs because of the uh, memory, uh, memory access is localized. So here shows the detail of our uh, LS flow LHO. So uh, compressible large eddy simulation is available. So 
the governing equation is compressible Navier-Stokes equation with scalar transport uh, for combustion modeling. Uh, so combustion modeling is based on the frame rate progress variable approach. So detail of this scheme are shown here. So we have conducted many validations and I will pick up one of them. So this is a, a, a experiment using only one single injector. So this con uh, uh, experiment uh, was done in JAXA. So in this experiment, uh, the propellant are uh, liquid oxygen and gas hydrogen. And uh, here shows the combustion uh, conditions and these are are very similar to the full-scale combustor. So you can see the coaxial injector. So at the center, there is a, 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 a flow path of uh, liquid oxygen, and around there, there is a gas hydrogen in, introduced. And this is a computational mesh, and we have one over milli, uh, mega degree of freedom to achieve second order in this case. So these two figures show the comparison between a uh, comparison of power spectrum density of pressure measured at the combustion chamber and LOX manifold. So looking at the comparison at the combustion chamber, so beautiful agreement is obtained. Uh, this peak and this peak, these, are correspond, uh, these correspond to the first longitudinal mode of inside the combustion chamber, and next one is the second longitudinal mode. So very good agreement is obtained. And in the bottom here, uh, this is a comparison at the ROX manifold. Again, reasonable agreement is obtained, such as this peak and this peak. So we are satisfied with this result. So uh, we move on to the simulation for full-scale combustor. So as I said, full-scale combustor has more than 500 injectors. And here is chamber and nozzles. So this animation shows a computational mesh. This blue line shows the mesh point, and here is the injector, and this is the inlet of the locks, liquid oxygen, many injectors. And here is the inlet of the gas hydrogen here. So in order to, this create, uh, to generate this mesh, we employed overset method. So first, we create a mesh of injector and combustion chamber. So as shown here, injector has a LOX flow duct and also the, in the, uh, the uh, gas hydrogen flow field, flow duct. And then at the downstream, there is an overset region to connect this mesh with the chamber mesh. So here shows a chamber mesh. So chamber mesh is very simple. This is just a cylindrical shape. So after that, uh, we copy this mesh at one, 500 locations because uh, most of the injector has a similar shape, a configuration. That's why we just copy this one at 100 times. After that, uh, we employ the whole cut method. So in, uh, in whole cut method, this surface overset region uh, works as a cutter to make a hole inside the chamber mesh as shown here. So total number of the cells is 320 million and total number of degree of freedom is 2.6 billion uh, to achieve second order accuracy in space. So this simulation is, uh, was done using our supercomputer system, and we used uh, almost uh, 1,000 nodes, uh, uh, 46 kilocores. And it took about two weeks uh, to simulate the computational, uh, uh, to simulate the physical time of four milliseconds. So actually, four milliseconds is not enough to, dissolve, uh, to uh, analyze the flow field statistically. But uh, because of the limitation of the resources, so currently we have four milliseconds data. So this is a result. So you can see uh, the whole, many holes correspond to the injectors, and you can see frames uh, burning, turbulence frames. And the injector surface and the face plate is uh, shown, colored by the pressure. So you can see pressure waves is propagating around. So uh, this is the first trial for us to simulate a full-scale rocket combustor. So after this first trial, we found 
several issues, actually. So that's why so we are now investigating uh, solving such issues. So we hope to rerun these simulations in this year or next year. So uh, up to now, uh, so in second uh, part, so I showed you what we have been done now. So uh, next I will show where to go in 10 years. So this shows, uh, uh, so as you know, all the si uh, life cycle of the system is roughly divided into conceptual design phase, design phase, and manufacture test, and operation and maintenance. So the simulations I showed you previously is uh, covered from design, manufacture, and test. But we still have a uh, conceptual design phase at first, and at the end there is an operation and maintenance phase. The simulation technique uh, used in these two uh, phases are so-called system simulation. So regardless of air space system, and also ground systems such as power plant, car, so many system is composed of many subcomponent and many physics. So, uh, so for example, liquid rocket engine, as I show you, so the engine, uh, liquid rocket engine composed of uh, pump, turbine, combustion chamber nozzles, electrical valves, motors, many component. So that's why the requirement for system simulation is first, multi-physics capability is important. To, to simulate the whole the system at once. And then, in conceptual design phase, we need to carry out the trade-off study using optimization techniques such as genetic algorithm. That's why uh, the system simulation in conceptual design phase require high throughput. So looking at the operation and the maintenance phase, so we also simulate the whole system at once. So that's why some multi-physics capability is important. But in the operation and maintenance phase, so in some cases, we need a high throughput. But in some cases, we need a real-time simulation capability. So this is a pretty different. So I, today, I will show you one of the example of the system simulation. Uh, so currently, JAXA is, uh, is developing the reusable launch vehicle. Uh, so in the reusable launch vehicle, maintenance is a key point. So between each flight, we need a maintenance. And it is considered that 25% of the launch cost is come from the maintenance. So in the maintenance, of course, liquid rocket engine is the most important component because very complex. So that's why so we have started, prog uh, started the study of prognostics and health management, so-called PHM, using machine learning. So uh, that one of the challenges in, in, in PHM of liquid rocket engine is the lack of training data. Uh, because uh, there are few uh, limited uh, chance to carry out that static final test of liquid rocket engine are also the flight. So that's why so we, uh, we, uh, we uh, carried out the system simulation to generate the training data set. So here shows the system simulation of liquid rocket, uh, reusable liquid rocket engine called RSR engine uh, developed by JAXA. So as I said, uh, liquid rocket engine is composed of many components. And we can carry out the high fidelity simulation to each component. However, uh, high, it is not applicable to simulate whole engine system at once. That's why so system simulation is required. So in this system simulation, main components such as pump turbine, combustor nozzles, regenerative cooling channels, uh, they are modeled assume, assuming one dimensional or quasi one dimensional theory. And then these models are integrated by using bond graph method in, in, in this uh, simulator. So here shows the example of the uh, one quasi one dimensional model. Uh, for the, so this is a model for orifice and valve. This is a model for heat exchanger. So as you know, this is very simple models. So you can find this in the textbook of undergraduate student. So uh, here is the uh, models for pump and turbine. Again, this is a very simple model. 
And these sim uh, simple models has many hyperparameters. So if the such hyperparameters can be cal calibrated properly, so we can get reasonable agreement. So in this slide, I compared the result of system simulation with the starting firing test of our SR engine. So in this test, uh, the engine was ignited at zero, second zero, and then increased it to 45% uh, thrust at first. After eight seconds, uh, the thrust was increased to 100% thrust, as shown here. And at 43 seconds, we cut the engine off, right here. So uh, this uh, is just the result of thrust, combustion pressure, turbine rate temperature of fuel turbo pump, and this is a rotation speed of fuel turbo pump. So as you see, uh, general trend uh, agree very reasonably with the static fire test. Uh, so uh, the accuracy is around 2.5 2, percentage in 100 percentage thrust. So we have built uh, many system simulations now, such as uh, rocket, rocket, rocket engine I showed you, and the rendezvous and docking system, and the spacecraft propulsion system, and wind tunnels, so many system simulations. But all of such system, system simulation employed very simple model, such as one dimensional model, as I show you, and in some cases we employ empirical model, and in some, in some cases, we use linear model. And uh, we have a large work on high fidelity simulations, but unfortunately, currently, there are no conversations between these two simulations. So that is the issue I, we have now. So, but it is not a good idea to integrate high fidelity simulation directly into the system simulation, mainly because of the computation cost. So high fidelity simulation has a large computation cost and needs very large computers. But uh, we can use uh, models and result and knowledge from obtained from the high fidelity simulation. If they are fed into machine learning and then create reduced order model, reduced order model, we can use as a model into the system simulation. So for example, if we can use this ROM in the conceptual design phase, a system with excellent performance will be realized. And also, if we can use this model in the operation and maintenance phase, a system can achieve high, higher operational efficiency. So I will show you a very simple example, very small example. So the system simulator of our SR engine has one issue. Uh, so this figure shows the time series turbine inlet temperature along with a valve opening ratio. So we found that if the, uh, uh, the operation, operating condition is changed by changing this valve, the result becomes very bad. So this is a result of a static firing test shown by Black Line. And this is a original system result, uh, result of original system simulator. So you can find large dis uh, disagreement uh, is observed here. So uh, after analyzing uh, the result, uh, the reason, so we found that the tr heat transfer model between uh, combustion gas and the nozzle wall, so this is a, a reason for the disagreement. So that's why so we conducted uh, many CFD simulations and then create a reduced order model and integrate into the regenerative cooling channel model. And the result is shown by this orange colored line. So you can see beautiful agreement is obtained. So this is a, a very small and simple example, but the potential of system simulation is huge. So we may be possible to develop the spacecraft that go to the deep space freely if we can use high fidelity system simulations in conceptual design phase. And also we may be possible to develop an autonomous spacecraft, autonomous aerospace system, if we can use high fidelity simulations in operation and maintenance phase. That is our aim in next 10 years. So uh, let me summarize my talk. So today I will show you the, some activities of 
uh, uh, using simulation in, in airspace development. So uh, I will pick up some uh, examples, design of launchpad of Epsilon, development of massively parallel computing, combustion CFD program for, uh, for the design of full-scale rocket combustor, and then system simulations of reusable uh, liquid rocket engine used in the maintenance. So future direction of our research in numerical simulation team is also presented. So using machine learning, so reduce all the model that compromise fidelity and computational cost will be possible. And then high fidelity system simulation will be realized by using, by integrating such reduced order model. And after that, so we can, we want to develop our autonomous aerospace systems with the help, help of high fidelity system simulation. This is our goal in next 10 years. So thank you very much for your attention. Really nice talk, lots of uh, very cool uh, science that you're doing, especially <coughs> connecting, you know, experiment with the simulation angle. And uh, yeah, these are some extremely complicated finite element simulations you've got running. So I, I understand why you'd want to do reduced order models. Um, so my question is, as you said, you know, running on 960 nodes for two weeks, you got four milliseconds, yeah. four milliseconds. So that's like a massive amount of compute. Um, which makes you wonder, is the world a simulation? There must be a lot of compute, eh? <laughs> but beyond that, um, how are you training for your reduced auto models? Because 10 years ago or 15 years ago, people were all about reduced auto models like polynomial chaos, and today we're talking about different things. I don't even know what the latest trends in reduced auto models are. But if you've only got four seconds of data from, four milliseconds, milliseconds of data from two weeks of compute, you don't have that many training sets on which to train the coefficients of your reduced auto models. So how do, you, how do you get around that problem? Because I come from the world of seismic imaging or geophysics, and we have similar problems as well. So I'd, I'd love your perspective. Okay, so good question. So we, are, we have a many work to generate the reduce order model, and currently most of the machine learning guy use deep learning, right? But, uh, and, uh, yes, but uh, in the combustion simulation, uh, it's a multi-scale phenomena. Because this is a turbulence combustion frame. So there are many uh, scale of vortices, right? Small scales and big, large scale. So these, the interaction of these vortices creates the flow field. So I'm wondering how to model such multi-scale vortex, turbulence vortex by using the reduced order model. So I have no idea right now. So sorry about that. So that's why currently what we can do is, uh, uh, is very simple phenomena only. But the, the result I showed you, the co combustion simulation, uh, uh, is, is currently I'm, I don't know how to uh, create a reduced order model. But that is a very important point and we are working on that right now. But maybe it's, it's still difficult, I have no idea. So, so please tell me when you find a good method. <laughs> yeah. um, I was wondering how many scales of turbulence you managed to resolve. In my area, I have struck a limit of you know, three or four magnitudes in, in turbulence and with mixing and combustion, that must be a matter. How is that a limitation on how accurate these high fidelity models are and then turbulence is going to ultimately be something you just have to compute? Okay, uh, so actually uh, the most difficult point of combustion simulation is that validation data is very limited. So uh, if uh, we, uh, so I want to answer to your question, how, uh, how, uh, uh, so the scale we need to compute, but there is no uh, good experimental data such as uh, uh, the PIB or LDB. So if we have such good data, for example, at the frame front, so maybe we can answer to your question. 
but currently we don't have such validation data. So that's why we only, uh, what we can do is just compare the pressure sensor data, power spectral density. So that is very uh, important but difficult topic we have. So that's why in JAXA, we, our team is collaborating with uh, uh, experimental guys in JAXA, and then we communicate to each other how to improve the uh, measurement technique also. So I have no answer at this moment, sorry about that, but it's a very difficult issue. Thank you, please. Oh, one more question, quick. <laughs> Just shout out. <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah. Yes. Yes, good, good question. So uh, we're also working on that. So, uh, uh, so uh, to make a reduced order model, the one of the key technology I, uh, we think right now is uh, calibration of the model. So calibration to the living asset, living system is uh, very important. But real-time calibration is another big topic. So currently we are looking at the uh, deep learning or deep reinforcement learning to, to, to achieve, uh, to model the uh, uh, degradation, so uh, living in the system. So, but that is very important topic and we are working very hard right now. But today I don't, I cannot show you a good result <laughs> today. Sorry about that. Thank you very much. Please join me thanking Seiji for a very interesting